Good morning. My name is Scott Harper, president of the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. I would like to welcome you to our show today, Mind Your Business, where your host, Cassandra Rosen, our Director of Membership Development, will sit down with our great chamber members and talk history, community involvement, and share some what's new info about their company or organization. I hope you enjoy the show. Welcome to Mind Your Business, the afternoon radio show where I sit down with local business leaders to get the inside scoop of who they are, what they do, and what has made their business successful. I am your host, Cassandra Roshan, the Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. The Chamber is a nonprofit organization with the mission of improving the economic economic development and quality of life for the Conroe, Willis, and Montgomery communities. The Chamber is made up of over 1,000 members of these business communities. The Chamber provides members various monthly networking events, educational seminars, cost-effective marketing opportunities, as well as finds ways to give back to the communities we serve. The Chamber has been in business for business for over 80 years. And of course, I want to thank everyone who is listening in and welcome our guests in the studio. We have another great lineup today, and to kick us off, we are with Wes Carr and Vicki Musgrove with the Conroe Noon Lions Club. And actually, we have a studio full of lions today because I'm a lion, and Dick, the station owner, is also a lion. Mm -hmm. So we'll have to practice our lion roar at the end. (laughs) But thank you guys so much for being here today. Um, Before we dive into Lions Club and what it is, tell us a little bit about yourselves. I go first? Sure. Yeah, ladies okay. first. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've been with the Conroe New Lions Club for 28 years. Wow. Of course, I started as a youngster, but anyway. Uh, I was going to say, because you're what, like 35? That's or it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, when, I I first, when I first <laughs> joined them, um, they had right around uh, 200 members, and now we're up to over 300. And awesome. so I've seen it go from smaller mm-hmm. to bigger to big <laughs> and um but uh, i've loved all the 28 years working with all these guys it's it's been great that's great and you keep them in line oh that's try <laughs> try <laughs> awesome and wes what about you hey guys thanks for having us um i've been in the conroe area for 45 years i'm the current uh conroe noon president mm-hmm. a lot of good guys have gone before me um it's it's about a six-year commitment to to do that and it's been really enjoyable it's been a, a real eye-opener for me um i own a 37-year business a paint business that's located here in conroe and and one in houston and i'm also a conroe pd reserve patrol officer so I get to see a lot of the a lot of the city uh, so then you definitely try to keep everyone in line oh <laughs> yeah we do our part <laughs> <laughs> and now vicky you you work for Lions Club, yes. correct? Yes. What What is your role for Lions Club? What's the, the title well, and what does it mean? Well, I'm the executive secretary. Of course, any organization or club has their presidents, mm-hmm. you know, but I'm actually the one behind the scene, mainly doing all their administrative stuff. Yeah. You know, members have to be billed, minutes mm-hmm. have to be taken, uh, your newsletters need to go out, um, whatever needs to be handled, you know, administrative wise. That's basically what I do. And of course, you know, just help them with stuff on their events, the yeah. fundraisers, all that kind of stuff. Right. And we'll yeah. kind of talk a little bit more about the, I guess, how the roles of the different, you know, the president and vice mm-hmm. president. We'll get to that after we talk a little bit about, you know, you hear, you know, people know of Lions Club. Mm-hmm. They A lot of the, the cities around the area, and I know I'm from Minnesota, we had Lions Club mm-hmm. up there. But what a lot of people don't even know, what is Lions Club? What do they do? Okay. Well, it's the largest and the most effective world service organization it was started in 1917 uh, wow. i think chicago um, you were their first member right yeah <laughs> good thing this is not tv <laughs> and uh right now it's grown to about 1.3 million people wow. 46,000 clubs in 207 countries and and uh, as far as our local club goes we are the second largest club in the united states and awesome. we're um the 11th largest in the world wow. at about 300 members. And we'll talk about that a little bit more. The original mission of Lions Clubs International was uh, to help fight blindness, prevent blindness mm-hmm. around the world. And, and that was from a challenge from Helen Keller. And and so uh, internationally, uh, Lions have been able to 
totally eradicate river blindness, which doesn't seem that big of a deal to us, mm-hmm. but but it's affected 147 million plus people, wow. and so we were able to you know globally eradicate that, and uh, currently doing about 15 million vision screenings uh, across the world for mm-hmm. children for glasses. So our our big philanthropy is is vision and mostly for children, but it's grown now. Our our motto is we serve and. Uh, I mean, we feed the hungry, we have humanitarian relief projects, mm-hmm. we focus on seniors in the community, um, projects for special needs children, and then a lot of it, a, a lot of the dynamics of Lions Club is how uh, a local club decides to use their resources, and, right. and we'll talk about that some more. Yeah, absolutely. So then give us some history on, on Conroe Noon Lions Club, because that's kind of the you know, 50,000 foot level from the international mm-hmm. side. And, you know, we're one club here, well, the 11th largest in the world, which right. is pretty awesome right, right here in Conroe, right. Texas. Exactly. So give us some history on the Conroe Noon Club. Okay. Um, for a long time, Lions Club International was a men's only club, like a, a lot of other clubs that started back in that And then that you got time. smart? Got real smart <laughs> because the, the women, uh, you know, there's uh, probably 30% women in most of the clubs and they do about 80% of the work. So Agreed. we're glad to have them. So uh, it started, the local club here started in 1939 and it started with 32 men that decided that they believed in the We Serve motto. Mm-hmm. So they got together in some of the local hotels and things here in town. And, and uh, now we've grown, like I said, to the, the 300 members with the exact same goals that we've had um, all the way back. Uh, from that time when they did that and when they got together and and um, we maintain the core focus of uh, vision with our lab we have a lab right here in town that we we actually uh, make glasses we manufacture glasses we do vision screenings for children and homeless in the area then we follow that all the way through with making the glasses for those children and Mm -hmm. those homeless and also for mission trips so uh, that's that's kind of the core of the of the local club we do a lot more than that but that's kind of an overview of it that's awesome. That's all. Yeah, that's. I didn't really realize. I guess the history as far as it started as men only club. I didn't know that. Yeah. Oh yeah. Some of them still are. Yeah. And really, um, Cassandra and Conroe, um, like you said, they started in um, thirty nine. So actually, we're celebrating y'all. The chamber celebrating eighty years. Mm-hmm. We're celebrating seventy five. Awesome. But what's kind of interesting is um, some of those uh, members that we have now. Their grandfathers, fathers mm-hmm. were some of the original charter members oh, and things yeah. like um, Leo Metcalf. Mm-hmm. Well, now Will's a member. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, in Burl, Canada mm-hmm. is Kara's granddad. Mm-hmm. The so, so, you know, yeah, Morton's as well. That's mm-hmm. right. The Mortons have been in. So, I mean, it is a, a generational Conroe um, landmark. You know, yeah, that we've definitely. been around that long and been that long and, and affected the community that for that long. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah. And so when it first started in uh-huh. infancy, where where were the meetings and, and all of that? Because obviously it wasn't yeah. at the convention. I, the <laughs> first, yeah, that's right. Um, it says that they first uh, met at the State Hotel. Uh, they later, later went across the street to the Methodist Church. Mm-hmm. And supposedly I hear those were the best meals because the church <laughs> ladies would come that's in. That's right. Cook. Make home cooking, home, home <laughs> cooking and, and loved it. Uh, they went to the Birch Hotel, which was another one on another corner there by uh, in downtown Conroe. Mm-hmm. Uh, for uh, many, many years, they were at um, Hotel Conroe when, when it opened up yeah. in, the, in the 60s and uh, were, were there for many years. Um, they've been at the Holiday Inn. They've been at River Plantation Country Club. Uh, we were at Golden Corral a little while mm-hmm. while we were waiting for the convention, convention center. center. Yeah. But with a club our size, I yeah. mean, we average 120 to 130 at lunch. Oh, yeah. There's not a whole lot of places <laughs> for us to choose yeah. from. There's not you know. anywhere else to go, really. That's right. Yeah. And it's local for people mm-hmm. to get to on a, on a lunch hour. Definitely. Yeah. yeah. yeah that I, I'm thinking of all the other options in the area, and there yeah. really aren't any yeah. for a yeah. club You're, our size. Right. You're counting them on one hand. That's right. Yeah. That's right. Exactly. Um, and so I know you were ta- we talked about how the, the organization is kind of set up and in each of your roles, but I know – there's different elected positions within Lions Club. So talk a little bit about that because, Wes, you're the current president. Okay. And how, how do you, did you get to that point? Okay. Um, yeah, the, the commitment is you need to be a third VP first. And in order to be at that position, you need to uh, 
carry some other offices in in the club like secretary or treasurer mm-hmm. um, and you also need to be involved in as many as the com- of the committees as you can we have about 29 or so committees that are going all the time mm-hmm. um, so we encourage those that are going to go into the vice president positions to you know be involved in that because they're going to be controlling that eventually you know and so you do the do a some of that and then you move up to third vp and the third vp carries uh the committees that have to do mostly with the 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 club itself like Mm -hmm. uh the picnics and the things that we do as as a club and then uh as you move into the second uh, vp position it gets a little bit harder and and that's all of our um that's all of our big Community service. Community service projects, charities that we do, like our camp and uh, Christmas Vision. baskets, kids on the lake. Things I'm the that we'll va- talk vice about. chair for kids on the lake. Yeah. See? Yeah. 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 <laughs> so you're you're preparing yourself for vice yeah. presidency. Is that what I'm doing? <laughs> I wasn't aware of that. No one told me that when they asked me to be the vice chair. Yeah. Yeah. So then you moved to first VP, which is by far the hardest job mm-hmm. in the whole, well, besides Vicky's. Oh. It's, yeah. it's yeah. the hardest right. job. Um because they're responsible for all the fundraising and not everybody likes the fundraising section mm-hmm. of it you know and and th- those are all our big big events that we'll talk about here in a second but uh then you move into the the president's position and that's the best position because <laughs> i get to look at all the things that um I uh, had a good idea maybe that I thought was a good idea as I was coming up through the ranks there and I get to get with Vicki and say hey what if we tried this mm-hmm. and what if we try and I can kind of uh, hand feed some of those projects while my VPs worry about the running of the club yeah. so um, can focus on the bigger picture right the things you want to yeah. do the yeah. other things you had to do yeah yeah, yeah. You know, but but here's an opportunity to do things you want to do That's and great. then as immediate past president you have some other roles that are involved there too so it's it's a five five to six mm-hmm. year commitment wow. you know to make that in it's yeah. enjoyable well, i've learned a lot um, my public speaking is i think gotten better i mean <laughs> oh, i'm pretty yeah. bad Absolutely. at it you know yeah. but uh anyway so uh yeah it it's uh i encourage folks to get on that track and then of course we got a district there's a district mm-hmm. after that that's right. about 1800 mm-hmm. members strong that we're in 60 plus clubs and um if you were willing you could start that same track in the district level and then we also have our Texas Lions camp in Kerrville that we support very strongly through this club. And they also have the exact same track of mm-hmm. VPs and presidents and elected directors that you can get on that as well. So, so is that your next step? That is my next step. Awesome. Yeah, in fact, uh, yeah, the camp will be camp director. Uh, I hope to get yeah. voted in here in, in a couple of months. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Well, you would have my vote if I Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, with all these awesome things that Lions Club does, you know, I'm, of course, the vice chair of Kids on the Lake, mm-hmm. which I think is amazing. Mm-hmm. Yep. Um, you know, going out to, to Ener- Energy Lake uh-huh. and help in having a day of fun with all the kids and their families and mm-hmm. helping relieve some of the stress for those families. But there's so many different programs and committees and, and mm-hmm. events that Lions Club does. And I know that there's a lot of community support and companies supporting that, but mm-hmm. Otherwise, how is the organization funded? Because you can't do all these awesome things unless you have some funds to do it. Yeah, well, that's true. And and it's broken up. It, it's important for even our members to understand it's broken up into two categories. We have the administrative and we have the charities. So mm-hmm. it, it's important for the the folks that support us, our community partners and our volunteers that that give money and, and their time, it's important that they understand that we have an administrative side that's mostly funded by members' dues, mm-hmm. okay? So we're not using our charity dollars to pay salaries and office supplies lunch, and things or, or any lunch or yeah. any of that, you know? So we have a totally separate administrative budget that uh, takes care of all that. And then we have our uh, charities budget, which is blessed beyond measure. I mean, the uh, the funds for our charity budget come from member donations. They come from fundraisers that we do. And, and by far, our most successful and uh, biggest program for our community is our community partners, mm-hmm. where we have about uh, 129, I think 129 businesses and individuals that become a community partner with uh, the club. And used to, we would 
we would go out and we'd have a skeet sh- shoot, say, and so we would come to you and we would say, hey, would you like to give to our skeet shoot? And uh, you'd be like, ah, yeah, okay, here, I'll give. And then, you know, we'd come back to you six months later and say, hey, <laughs> would you like to be in our golf tournament? Yeah. You know? Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, I'll do that. Well, this way, as a community partner, they pay a, a donation one time a year right. and it gets them involved in all of the projects and we never have to go back to them. Mm-hmm. They they get spots at everything that we do and, and it's a way for us to, to budget our charities so mm-hmm. that we have the ability to to go ahead and and uh, get all of that taken care of and have all yeah. our charities handled you know at, at the beginning of the year basically yeah that's so, a nice feeling yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. <laughs> awesome um and before we take a short break um i mean obviously the club being 75 years old how have how has the club changed over time from you know back when it started 75 years ago yeah. to now because I know you've seen all of it, Wes. So yeah, you have right. some great yeah. insight. <laughs> well, I, I can tell you from a – yeah, well, we're, we're really fortunate in that mm-hmm. um, we've got a lot of aggressive members. We have a lot of young members. Our, our If you look at the clubs that are successful that we just talked about, the 40 – 6,000 clubs, uh, the average age is, is pretty high in mm-hmm. most of them. You know, it may be in the 60s, you know, 65, something like that. And that's that's mostly what folks see. Uh, but our club and some other successful ones are, are very young. We're, mm-hmm. you know, we're down in the 40s. And that that's a big change because the guys that started it never expected that. <laughs> mm-hmm. You know, yeah. they expected it to be an older guys club, you know, and they would do specific things in the community and, mm-hmm. and um so when they would pick a couple of projects to do, now we have, like I said, 29 or so committees and big projects going all the time. And um, I, th- I think that's one change. That, oh, yeah. And, and obviously the uh, community support, you know, that we see now that they may not have had back in the, back then, the resources right. and things make, it, make us able to just continue to be successful. Definitely. Mm -hmm. And how about for you, Vicki? Because, I mean, you said you've been involved 20 Uh plus years now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I think that our club is very fortunate in that we never get stagnant. Mm -hmm. You know, we don't just, we keep changing. Not, you know, huge changes, just a little bit of change here and there, modifying things and not letting it get stale. You know, we don't do the same old thing over and over. Every time an event comes up, the first thing we say is what do we need to do different better Mm -hmm. how can we change this in other words there's there's not that uh no we've done it this way this is why it needs to be yeah you know it it, and that and in that sense i think that has you know that's why we can get younger members exactly that's why we have this um lot of good fellowship is because you know the old members they remember when, but they were just as eager as these new members mm-hmm. were then, you know, and they're just as proud as the new members are now setting their footprints on, you know, the path. Well, you know, let's, you know, add this or let's take away that or, yeah. and, and because, and that's where a lot of the clubs are getting in trouble now is, you know, they're not, they did their, you know, orange and apple sales in the <laughs> 1940s and they're still doing orange and apple right. sales and, you know. <laughs> Well, and I think it's important to to point out that the patriarchs of our club from the very beginning set out a thinking for us to think out of the box. Right. And they're still like that today. You, I mean, the, the guys that we have here that were from the original club, uh, you know, during as it's grown up, they're the first ones to tell our new members to jump out there and try something out of the box. Mm-hmm. Hey, if it just doesn't work, it just doesn't work. We right. back up and punt, we do something different next year. Yeah. You know, and, and I think that's uh, I think that's one of the – big changes our club is in. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. It's so important to to keep things moving, evolving and, and not keeping it just stagnant mm-hmm. like you're saying mm-hmm. because I can speak, you know, being a younger person. Right. Um I, that it it draws you in, it engages you because uh-huh. if you know you have your skeet shoot every year and oh, uh-huh. okay. I already know yeah. what's going to happen. Yeah. Yeah. It, it keeps you coming back for more knowing right. there's going to be something new and different. Right, so I think right, Lions right. does a great job of that. Yeah. I mean, I've been a member for a year. But yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. In, in that year, yeah. I can tell you, it's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Um, but again, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we're going to talk a little bit more about the events that Lions Club does. Uh, so stay with us. Hello, this is Dennis Nelson, inviting you to come with me through the doorway of imagination and into the theater of the mind. The Players Theatre Company Old Time Radio Hour presents a play every Saturday night at 7 p.m. on Lone Star Internet Radio. 
Be it drama or comedy, thriller or love story, every exciting episode is carefully chosen straight from the golden age of radio and performed live by talented actors, musicians, and sound effects crew. Every sound you hear will be 100% live and homemade. Anything can happen. So join us, please, every Saturday night at 7 p.m. for the Players Theatre Company Old Time Radio Hour, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Let's go to Lukenbach, Texas. Tired of Waylon, Willie, and the boys? Join me, Gordon Lockhart, for Beethoven, Bach, and the boys. Every Saturday from 8 to midnight on Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Symphonies, concertos, and sonatas by composers such as Mozart, Tchaikovsky, and Bernstein. That's Lone Star Classical Music After Dark. Every Saturday from 8 to midnight on IRLoneStar.com. And welcome back to Mind Your Business, the monthly radio show where I, Cassandra Roshan, the Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce, interview chamber members to find out who they are, what they do, and what has made them successful in their business. Again, we are here with Wes Carr and Vicki Musgrove with the Conroe Noon Lions Club, and we just got a little background information, history about what the Lions Club is. Um, I've been a Lion for a year, and I've learned a, a lot of new things. So mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited about that. Mm-hmm. But we're going to get into um, how do you be part of this organization and, and what some of the events are that Lions does throughout the year, because there's a lot. So I'm a member, Dix, everyone in this room mm-hmm. is a member yeah. of Lions Club, but a lot of our listeners out there are not. So how does someone become a member of this great organization? Well, f- first, Lions is by invitation. So somebody invited you as a guest, Mm -hmm. you know, to come to a meeting. And as you sit there and, you know, you hear what we do, you hear an interesting program, you feel the fellowship. I mean, that's that's what hooks people. Mm -hmm. Um, It is by invitation. um, But we have an active membership committee. So, you know, anybody out there that's in the business community or, you know, retiree or somebody that just wants to get hooked in somewhere you know if they'll call the club office we'll get a membership person with them talk Mm -hmm. to them about it invite them to lunch find out a little bit about them uh you know and then then somebody will ultimately sponsor them yeah you know and it's not like you know we tattoo them and you know put them (laughs) through this you know horrible you know there's there's a little bit of a hazing a little little hazing but not too bad yeah (laughs) anyway you uh, barely made it by the way <laughs> I'm glad that I was able to yeah, muscle through. Yeah, but that's, I mean, that's how you ultimately become a member. Uh, we do have a due structure, which, you know, does pay for the administrative side of lunch mm-hmm. and, and all the other stuff. And, uh, of course, then, then you pick your niche, you know, right. if it's working with kids, if it's working in the recycle center, if it's, you know, uh, working the dinner dance and auction, mm-hmm. you know, you just kind of, m- different members, of course, will pick their niches and and, yeah. and focus on something. And there definitely is something for everyone. Yeah. That's right. If you, if you don't get involved, it's it's your fault. You know, we we try to make it so there's there's no reason for you not to see something in there mm-hmm. that you like. And we're always looking for quality members. I mean, we've got a membership drive going right now and uh, we would love to have folks uh, call up and come talk to us, and, and we'll get them sponsored. And let's talk about some of the ways that they could get involved. Yeah, you know, definitely. Um, because not everybody likes fundraising. <laughs> and, and again, we're you know we are split up into uh, community service projects like. Uh, Kids on the Lake that you mentioned earlier, yeah. right? Yeah. So Woo-hoo. that's coming up, and that's where we uh, take special needs children with their families on Mother's Day weekend, Mm -hmm. and we help them fish, and we have a Mm -hmm. fishing tournament for them. We feed them. We uh, let them spend as much time as they can with their families. We take them on boat rides. Mm -hmm. We bait their hooks for them. So Hot dog lunch. Hot dog lunch. It's a great time for them to, uh, for the kids to come out, and they look forward to it every year. They bring their tackle boxes. They bring hands full of rods, even though we got cane (laughs) poles for them. That's not good enough, you know. So they, they, uh, they look forward to that event. Uh, our international president uh, for Lions Club International, one of his goals this year was for clubs to 
try to step out in the community and read to mm-hmm. children. So we've adopted Reeves, yeah. and we go there. Our members go there and read, even if it's just for 10 or 15 minutes. And uh, that's been a very successful program, very uh, good-feeling program for, for our members. And it, it's a great opportunity for them to spend yeah. very little bit of time. You know, and then, of course, right. there's a mentoring program there, mm-hmm. too. But. And I do, I am always go out and do the reading at, mm-hmm. at Reeves. And mm-hmm. it's it's an awesome, awesome experience mm-hmm. because, it, it you know, it, it is a minimal time commitment. I'm, I usually end up being in the classroom about 20, 25 right. minutes. Right, right, right. You know, you talk they're to They're so cute. Kids. Yeah, and yeah. they're just, they're so excited to have a guest come in right. and, and read to them because it's something new and out of the ordinary. Sure. And, you know. Everyone can read a kid's book. So. Oh. <laughs> it's a lot of, a lot of fun. Run. Even Warner. <laughs> yes, even Warner Fells. <laughs> And so what are the other some of the other programs and ways that well, people can get involved? One of the one of the very few programs that goes on outside our community is our Texas Lions camp. Mm-hmm. And so some of our fundraising dollars do go to that camp, but it's such a huge program. It's yeah. a, we run we run about fifteen hundred kids through there free of charge for a week long program where they ride horses, all the things that that normal kids are able to do special needs children are able to do and the whole camp is set up with a can-do attitude you yeah know? and and there's no reason why the, the kids can't climb rock walls even if they're they're would be unable anywhere else Mm so that's that's a great program it goes for three and a half months out of the year and like i said 1500 kids that's a lot of kids and then their families get to see and it's completely staffed with nurses and doctors Mm -hmm. that that are there for that particular group and uh so so that and then um we also you know again our biggest uh philanthropy is vision and our vision center here we do vision screenings on a on a regular basis with homeless and and uh children Mm -hmm. and uh especially in october that's our vision screening month Mm -hmm. right Mm -hmm. and uh then out of all of those screenings that we do then we're able to make those glasses right here at home so that's uh, awesome yeah so kids and glasses and uh reading those Mm -hmm. are things that our members can do mm-hmm. and I love how I mean our the vision program here is very strong and mm-hmm. successful mm-hmm. and I love that it continues to be so because that's like you were talking about before that the, really the founding mission mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. of right. Lions was to mm-hmm. help with that so I think that's really cool that we continue to and you do see that the buckets you mm-hmm. see the buckets yeah. all over town where you can put your glasses for us to recycle and we take those glasses and we use the parts that are uh, usable and then we recycle the others and I, I think from the the inception of the program and mm-hmm. I get in trouble with this number sometimes but we've touched or handled like 90,000 yes. pair of glasses mm-hmm. wow. it's, it's it's hard to imagine mm-hmm. you know how many glasses we're able to send on mission trips and things yeah. mm-hmm. that's awesome yep. yeah Big undertaking. Yeah. Awesome. And so then those are some of the different ways you can get involved the mm-hmm. the community service aspect. Mm-hmm. Um, what are some of the biggest fundraisers and events? Because there are people that love that side, mm-hmm. the party right. planners right. and all that. How does, what are some of those and what does that look like if people want to get involved that way? Okay. Do you want me to go? Yep. Okay. Community, <laughs> You're doing such a good job. <laughs> again, community partners is, uh, yeah. is a great way for us to partner with with those businesses here in town and for them to get something for their money mm-hmm. they they can see immediately when they give that that's the only time they're going to have to give there's three tiers of involvement that they can they can jump in and um, that gets them into all of the programs so that's that's our largest fundraiser and then we have the dinner dance and auction every year in september mm-hmm. where uh we have just that a dinner dance and auction where it, it's a I don't know we have like 600 people uh-huh. and mm-hmm. and why don't you tell a little bit about that well it, uh, yeah last year we had right at 550 um, it's a, the second Thursday in September at the convention center um, we generally pick some kind of theme and kind of center things around that theme uh, you know gourmet. last year was an Arabian night Arabian right? nights yeah, yeah. We had a few belly dancers. Um, Wes was one of them. Well, yeah. yeah. Oh, I did good. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Steve was a chic, but um, you know, uh, it's a big event. I mean, community. The businesses come out. They have tables for ten. They bring their employees. They bring their you know vendors. Um, they entertain them for the night with a nice meal, a little bit of entertainment. We have a live auction. We have a silent auction some dancing so uh that you know they get their money's worth yeah. at, at the dinner dance and auction very you know good place to mix and mingle with mm-hmm. with others around town so uh, yeah it's it's a big event big awesome. event 
Then, of course, we got our skeet shoot that yes. we change around. It was a skeet shoot for a long time, and now it's a clay shoot um, for sporting clays. And then we have a golf tournament that we have two flights all day, 120-plus teams. And I played so in that a, last year, and I won the award for hitting the most houses. Yeah, I'm pretty proud of myself. Yay. Uh, that's why we're changing the course. That's it. <laughs> oh, I was sorry. wondering yeah. about that, yeah. They, they may not have invited us back. <laughs> Yeah. And then we have, you know, we have other fundraisers along the way. Lucky Derby mm-hmm. at Christmas time. Yeah. You can buy a ticket for $100 and mm-hmm. get a chance to win a car. Yeah. And yeah. yeah. But it's not just a raffle. I mean, we turn around and, you know, we, we have, you know, a 1 in 20 chance of winning. So the odds right. are better. Then we take it and do it to a whole new level and play a game. And like we used to the Duck Dynasty characters this year. Yes. And I had that whole gimmick. Yeah. going so it's not like you just walk up and draw a ticket we try to keep things fresh mm-hmm. so yeah I mean just in that fundraiser alone that's another idea where we try and keep things sure. on the up and up and uh, definitely yeah, definitely yeah. um and you know if, of course with the, the events and the fundraising the community partners I mean you can't you can't do that everything alone you need those those community partners uh-huh. so what are some of the businesses that support you currently or support us I should say you know we talked about if we were going to list those Mm -hmm. and there's 129 so (laughs) So where would they find those if they if someone wanted to know who they who they were yeah um they just get the book from your office right right awesome yeah we have them listed there they and and they do so those community partners they're recognized at the skeet shoot we have their logos all up and around um at the golf tournament you know the logos and the signs Mm -hmm. any uh, of our our lunches yeah any of our events even even a vision screening you know so it shows that you know yeah cars uh wes's business is car red wine so you know he's a partner so every time we do a vision screening it shows where he's involved there you know uh or you know uh, kids on the lake it it shows where he supported the kids coming out and fishing we take we take those banners banners. to every event so then those those companies definitely get their values worth right they do right you know being seen and whatnot exactly exactly and and they're in a booklet they're in the uh you know um, uh, uh, every week you at know, the meetings, on the meetings, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're everywhere. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, and before we wrap everything up, um, I mean, I like I said, I've learned so much today about Lions Club, and I've been in it a year. But when your opinions, what has what's led to the success of Conroe Noon Lions Club being, you know, the second largest in the U.S., eleventh largest in the world? So obviously, we're doing something very right. Yeah. <laughs> Well, I think it all comes back to uh, Vicky mentioned a minute ago, keeping it fresh, and and I'll steal the uh, I'll steal the the motto from Texas Lions Camp, the the can do attitude. Mm-hmm. I mean, if if someone comes up with an event that they think would be a really neat event, we try it. And and if you even look at our own clubs across the country, the ones that you feel like may be struggling, it's because they're still doing the same spaghetti dinner that they yeah. did, you know. So um, I think the can-do attitude, give it a try. I mean, it's, it's not going to – if it doesn't work, you do something different next year. But, hey, I'll give you a prime example. Um, Gail Kane thought of a, a project that we could have where we had – Tell me the name of it again, Vicky. It's a special spring style show. Oh, there yes. we go. Yeah. So, so she felt like that uh, having adult. See, it's right. Uh, mm-hmm. It's Ad- an adult. Adult special needs from uh, New Danville. New Danville. Awesome. That's what they're, I was looking they'll for. They'll be so. in our. We've we had the. Uh, where members, you know, mm-hmm. club members did our spring style show, and and Gail said, you know. I saw a deal where you know they were helping these uh, special needs people put on a prom. We could turn our style show into something for them and awesome. make them feel great for yeah. a day. Take that. We took that idea, twisted it around a little bit, and so now that's set for May 28th. And you can watch for that to be big. It's not just going to be this lunchtime like yeah. normally. It, 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 it'll go, turn it'll in, become an annual event, It's going to be sure. an right. annual community program. That, yeah. That's that the is, Lion's Way. I love that. That's uh, yeah. right. That's <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Right. exactly. I, cool. I think, too, another thing that's very successful is, you know, we – we are a big club, mm-hmm. but we grew out of a hometown spirit. Yeah. You know, so when when you're here, you know, we have people with, you know, companies that have 500 employees and companies that have one and two and retirees. And mm-hmm. and so it, it's, it's still local. It's still community. They still have that heart to help to help here. And, and And I think that's where a lot of this fellowship grows, you know. Yeah, you're 
130 at lunch, but everybody has something in common because mm-hmm. they live here and they want to serve here. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. I, it's a, it's very a good hum- mix in there. It's yeah. very humble. Yeah. The, the club is very humble. It's, um, we, we don't do business at the club meetings, you know, at right. lunches. Mm-hmm. We have an, our own uh, meeting just for our business. So we don't conduct that there and, and uh, we don't normally you know line up work with mm-hmm. other folks you know at that at that meeting you, it's not about you that. call it's them later that's right the that's it's right about serving. Yeah. and we empower our members that's another thing yeah. i like we don't repeat presidents we empower our members mm-hmm. to come through that chain that we mm-hmm. were just talking about through that that process and uh th- that that brings us fresh ideas that brings new people in that brings mm-hmm. young people in so it it uh I think it's a great formula for success. Definitely. And so if someone's interested in being a community partner, or if they're interested like, in being a member, they can right. call me. I'll yeah. bring them. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. if, if someone's interested in, in getting Anything. involved, how do, they, have, how they, how do they contact Call you? the office. Yeah. And that uh, number? 936-760-1666. Uh, we do have a website, Uh, You know, the email is cnlc at consolidated.net. Awesome. Any of those. Great. Well, thank you guys so much okay. for coming coming in today. And I, like I said, I learned a lot, and I'm sure everyone out there did as well. So uh, we're going to take a short break. And when we come back, we are going to meet with Gold's Gym and hear how you can get fit for bikini season. Oh. So Dick needs to stay I'm tuned staying. for that. <laughs> 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 oh, so stay with us. Thanks, Cassandra. Have you ever wandered around a parking lot trying to look like you actually know where you parked? Then you'll love the Mark and Cindy Show. If buying toilet paper with aloe vera is the most exciting thing you're going to do today, then you'll love the Mark and Cindy Show. Even if you haven't tweeted, you'll still love the Mark and Cindy Show. Mm, How about twerking? Ew, that was one step over the line, Mark. Well, well, you said toilet paper. Look, we want listeners to tune in to the Mark and Cindy Show at 10 o'clock every weekday morning here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Uh, the Mark and Cindy Show, you know, it's like visiting with your best friends for coffee, except we will never stiff you with a check. And one of us always knows what she's talking about. Mm, well, okay, but it's still called the Mark and Cindy Show. You know that. <laughs> We'll see. The Mark and Cindy Show. Tune in to Lone Star Radio every weekday morning at 10 o'clock. Lone Star Internet Radio is now bringing you the weekly business hour show each Monday morning at 11 a.m. My name is Rick Schistler and I will be your host. Each week we will be bringing you local, area, and national business news that you can use. The program will also feature an interview with a local or national business person who will share their own experiences, successes, and failures in operating their businesses. Our show is for anyone who already owns a business, whether they work solo or have employees, and for those who are thinking about starting their own businesses. A bit of information about myself. Again, my name is Rick Schisler, and I am a Silver Fox advisor who has over 40 years' experience as a serial entrepreneur. As a part of our show, I will offer some advice and encouragement on our monthly topic, and I will take your questions by email at rschisler at silverfox.org or call into the station at 936-647-3776. See you on the radio Monday at 11 a.m. for the Weekly Business Hour. And welcome back to Mind Your Business, the monthly radio show where I, Cassandra Roshan, the Director of Membership Development for the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce, interview chamber members to find out who they are, what they do, and what has made them successful in their business. And we just heard from Vicki and Wes with the Conroe Noon Lions Club, and now we have Courtney and Gold's Gym. You. Awesome. Thank you so much for taking time out of your busy day from um, working out, I guess, lifting or <laughs> teaching others how to work out. Yes. And uh, coming into Lone Star Internet Radio. Um, so before we dive into questions about Gold's Gym, tell us about yourself. Well, I've only been in Conroe for about three months now. I'm originally from a very, very small town called Sheridan, Texas. It's closer to the Katy Seeley area for anyone who may be familiar with that. Okay. And then I went to college at Texas A&M University. I was out there for five years. And Aren't then you supposed to whoop or something after you say I, am supposed to, <laughs> but I didn't want to embarrass myself too much, so I decided to cut that part out. Okay. I kind of rehearsed a little bit in the car <laughs> on the way over here, but um, 
So I got my bachelor's uh-huh. in kinesiology from there, and then I moved out to Houston as soon as I got an offer from Goldstream Houston, and that's you know where I've been ever since. I've been with Goldstream for about two years now, and I've mm-hmm. been at three different locations. Wow. So I know before we started the show, I know you're obviously Conroe now, and before that you were in the Umbo location. Where were you before? Correct. And then I first started in the Bear Creek location, which is off of Highway 6 and Clay Road, kind of more Katy-ish yeah. area. Okay. Yes, yeah, so that's where I got my start. I started off as a personal trainer, and then I transferred to the brand new location. Mm-hmm. Actually started off in the little preview center before the even you know, bigger facility opened, and I was still a trainer there, and as soon as we opened in January, got my big promotion (laughs) to fitness manager, and then I was there for a year, and then, like I said, I've been with Conroe for about three months now. Yeah, so as a fitness manager, what what does that mean? What are your responsibilities? Well, I oversee the whole personal training department, so I'm in charge of, you know, all the personal trainers making sure that they are, you know, keeping up with their clientele, that they're happy, Mm -hmm. you know, doing their measurements, you know, doing all their program design requirements, and then, of course, meeting all the new members that come into our club. I meet, on average, you know, five new people per day, and just really sit down and discuss their fitness goals, exercise history, Mm kind of go over a brief nutrition, do their basic measurements, and go over a fit test to kind of really help them see where they're starting and to get them a good step forward at our facility. Okay, awesome. And how many personal, since you're over all the personal trainers, how many personal trainers does the Gold Gym and Conroe have? We currently have nine wow. personal trainers. Okay. Yes. And how many, do you know how many members that facility has? I don't. A uh, lot. <laughs> a lot. It, well, Connor is our oldest location, oh, okay. so we definitely have a good member base there. Yeah. But specific number, unfortunately, I really don't know, but we do see a lot of different people mm-hmm. and all very nice members I can say that awesome yeah I know you were saying that we have some very nice you have some very nice clients at uh from the Conroe area that that go to the gym yes we're proud to be the the nicest (laughs) (laughs) but I know every time that I go by Gold's Gym every time I've been in there it's always busy so you definitely have a good following yes very good environment very upbeat positive people you know take their fitness very seriously there which Mm -hmm. I really appreciate you know it's always good yeah it helps motivate other people to get started and new members it kind of inspires them you know looking at our older clientele saying oh you know I can't wait to you know reach that potential right oh yeah definitely so give us a little bit of history about Gold's Gym I know you said Conroe is one of the the first locations but what what's the history of Gold's Gym how it all began right well uh, Gold Team Houston is fairly new. Like I said, um, Conroe was our first location that we opened up. Now we have six. But Gold Team originated um, about 48 years ago, I want to say, wow. and it started with the first location in Venice Beach, California. Uh, oh, okay. Joe Gold opened up that, um, mm-hmm. and it everyone knows it as the mecca of bodybuilding. I mean, that's where <laughs> they shot all of those films with you know Arnold Schwarzenegger yeah. you know whenever he got famous for all of his bodybuilding and mm-hmm. that's kind of it's kind of just morphed from there right you know that's why we all wear the super you know swole guy and all of our t-shirts right. and stuff <laughs> <laughs> but you know and people sometimes kind of get overwhelmed because mm-hmm. they think that that's you know all that we can serve at Gold's Gym but like I said it has morphed into more of you know the trends now you know it's you can find, you know, your athletes at Gold's Gym still, but, you know, normal, average people just really looking for, you know, That'd be healthy. prime, yeah. you know, fitness equipment. I mean, that's what you're going to find at Absolutely. Gold's. Yeah, so you have a little bit of everyone. Yeah, well, and that's that's good. Have, have some good variety. So what is your, what are the different kind of services that you provide? Because I know that you have, like, the, the machines for cardio and, and weightlifting, but there you guys have a couple of other elements at the Conroe facility, too. Correct, yeah. So we do have your, you know, basic cardio, you know, free weights, mm-hmm. cable systems, and, you know, all of your free weights, barbells, all that good stuff. But so that kind of sets us apart is our group exercise classes. We do have primarily Les Mills, which is very prestigious in the group fitness world. Um, we offer classes Monday through Sunday at oh, wow. set times every month. You have anywhere from, you know, your body pump classes to where you can work total body resistance training to mm-hmm. Zumba is very popular if you like to dance. Um, like I said, very many different 
group exercise classes, and we kind of have a branch off of that as well, which is called our signature program classes. Mm -hmm. And this is actually fairly new. This was launched uh, during my time here with Bold's Gym. Oh, okay. And it's actually something that if we didn't follow, we'd almost be kind of silly not to because it's (laughs) probably the number one trend in the fitness world now is kind of your boot camp, CrossFit, more higher intensity style classes. Right. So we offer P90X and Club, uh, grit training, which is – you know, similar to CrossFit, you mm-hmm. don't have all your heavy weights, but it's more of your high intensity, muscular endurance, you know, really okay. pushing yourself to the level. It's a 30 minute class. And then also we have RIP 60, which is a suspension training class, very similar to TRX, okay. if you're familiar with that. Yeah. And um, it is more of a select class. So there's only 15 people per class. So oh, wow. the coach actually comes around, checks your form. Mm-hmm. It's more personalized that way. Definitely. And of course we have one-on-one personal training mm-hmm. and then a big amenity that I really like about Gold's Gym is our kids club and our youth performance program. So oh. kids club, we offer free child care to all of our members. Mm-hmm. Um, Very so, cool. you know, busy moms right. or families that want to come and live a healthy lifestyle, they can come bring their kiddos. And everyone is very nice, you know, takes care of the kids. And then also for the older kids who want to also be healthy, we have specific classes for them to where they can come in and participate and, you know, basic weightlifting for, you know, that age group yeah. or uh, relay races, you know, any kind of activities more geared towards yeah, the Yeah, get them moving. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And we do offer those Monday through Friday, mostly in the evening, just because mm-hmm. that is when kids are, you know, mostly yeah, available. Like, exactly. Yeah. But as the summer rolls around, we will be adjusting our schedule to add on to mm-hmm. anyone who may want to come in since they will have more free time. Yeah. Well, and that's great to get, get kids started young, being active, you know, going to the gym, being fit, because that's a habit that you develop, a good habit that they'll, exactly. you know, hopefully incorporate as they, as they get older. Most definitely. So that's great. Um, and, I know we were kind of talking about, you know, what, what your role is there and what kind of sets uh, Gold's Gym apart from other fitness facilities. But, you know, you've been been in the inter- industry for several years now. How have you seen the industry change over time? Well, this is a question that Dion was supposed to be here with me, our corporate <laughs> wellness. And I mean, she's been in the industry for many, many more years than I have. So someone with, you know, more than five year experience could probably answer this mm-hmm. more so than me. But where I, I mean, because I've, well, I've been involved in the gym, not, you know, actually working, but a yeah. part of a gym for some time. And something that I think that I've seen personally, like from a trainer perspective, mm-hmm. is more looking at disease prevention. Oh, yeah. Uh, rehab, mm-hmm. you know, some of the things that people can provide for themselves, like how to address alignment issues, muscle imbalances, all those things that, you know, create a lot of pain, especially as, you know, we get older, that we don't really know how to assess ourselves. We all know how to, you know, lift weights and walk on a treadmill, but Mm -hmm. it's really assessing further than that, more of a health, you know, standpoint than the, you know, fitness standpoint. Yeah, being healthy as opposed to, yeah, the bodybuilder, like you were talking about before. (laughs) Exactly, exactly. Great, awesome. Well, we're going to take a short break, and when we come back, we will talk a little bit more about uh, how Golds is involved in the community, and then also get some uh, fitness 101 here from Courtney, the fitness manager at Golds Gym Conroe. Stay with us. Hello, I'm Bonita DeRosa, animal control officer for the city of Willis. We invite you to tune in to Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 a.m. for the Willis Hour. On the first Thursday of the month, the Willis Hour will be covering upcoming events and news about the city. Join in the conversation with your city officials and other leaders in the community. On the third, we will be doing a recap of the last city council meeting. The mission of the City of Willis is to provide high quality services, accountability, and professional commitment to our citizens. We pledge to provide those who live, work, and visit our city an effective government that is open and responsive to the needs and values of the community. Again, we invite you to tune in on Lone Star Internet Radio every first and third Thursday of the month at 11 for the Willis Hour. Hello, this is Dennis Nelson, inviting you to come with me through the doorway of imagination and into the theater of the mind. 
The Players Theater Company Old Time Radio Hour presents a play every Saturday night at 7 p.m. on Lone Star Internet Radio. Be it drama or comedy, thriller or love story, every exciting episode is carefully chosen straight from the golden age of radio and performed live by talented actors, musicians, and sound effects crew. Every sound you hear will be 100% live and homemade. Anything can happen. So join us, please, every Saturday night at 7 p.m. for the Players Theater Company Old Time Radio Hour, right here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Carry around chicken breasts, like in your purse or something. <laughs> like, <laughs> who good? I haven't been doing that yet. I'll make sure I, I don't start. But yes. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Well, and be- our last question before we wrap up: If someone is just starting out, you know, trying to get on the the healthy track, what what's the one piece of advice, or where, what would you what piece of advice would you give them? Get started. <laughs> like that's really the hardest part is the mental mm-hmm. aspect of it. I mean, I speak to so many people who, you know, I've been thinking about it for six months, a year. Wow. Like yeah. and it is scary. It's a lot, you know, of mental, you know, th- obstacles that you have to come over before you step foot in the gym. But once you take that first step, it's a lot easier from there, you know, and we're having someone there to kind of help guide and give some basic information definitely kind of takes the pressure off of that. Yeah. And then, like I've been saying, just trying to be consistent, know that no one's ever going to be perfect Mm -hmm. and just trying to find healthier ways to live your life the way that you've been living it so that way you don't feel too overwhelmed or stressed out to where you're going to be like oh I'm done with this yeah because this is too hard which Mm -hmm. is what happens with most people right and then also set your goal higher than where you feel comfortable Mm -hmm. because I see a lot of people who you know will give it a good go for six months and get to where they want to be and then they're comfortable and they're like okay I can kind of slack off I can you know not eat as good as I was and Mm -hmm. then they slowly kind of create back the opposite way so I tell everyone to really you know give yourself like a 12-month goal and that sounds like a really long time but it almost takes that long to really create a lifestyle change Mm -hmm. and that's what I really like to see in people it's not oh I want to look good in a bikini or I want to look good for an event it's I want to create a whole new life for myself I want to be healthy for the rest of my life. If mm-hmm. I had to invest, you know, 12 months of my time to really learn everything, educate myself, then I can do that because it's going to, you know, pay off for however many more right. years. Definitely. Definitely. Awesome. Well, wonderful advice. Uh, thank you so much, Courtney, for your time and coming in to talk to us. Not a problem. Thank you for having me. For sure. And that's it for Mind Your Business. I want to thank Vicki, Wes, and of course, Courtney for spending the hour with me. Until next time, this is Cassandra Roshan with the Greater Conroe Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce saying so long for now and mind your business. Hey, everyone. This is Tina, your host from Retro Saturdays. I wanted to invite you to visit the Lone Star Studios here in downtown Conroe, Texas. We're all volunteers here, and we need your help in serving the Montgomery County area. Radio media is a fun field to be in. Lone Star Internet Radio serves Montgomery County with news, current events, local programming, and, of course, music. If you are interested in volunteering and sharing your talents in media, go to IRLoneStore.com and let us hear from you. Lone Star Internet Radio, serving Montgomery County from the heart of downtown Conroe.